Hey YouTube, it's Ice Fox here, and welcome to Guide to the Gustos Part 2. Uh, what I am going to be doing in this video is going into some of the more advanced plays of Gustos, as well as um, I'm going to be branching out into variants of Gustos. Uh, I'm going to start showing you the sort of build that you would see for something like this, cards that would be used in it or could be used in it, uh, tech cards and the sort. Um, so I will be including one variant in, in this video as well as, well after I go through all this stuff. But uh, I guess let's start it off. Uh, we have your top four Gustos, as always, uh, see last video about, about them. But uh, for the spells, we have Pot of Avarice and Creature Swap. Now, the reason why I'm including Pot of Avarice in here, even though it's a, even though it's uh, it, it's used in a lot of different decks that uh, go through their monsters and the like, but in in Gustos, it plays a huge part in how they play. It causes a lot of situations to change for your opponent, um, and it causes you you to change your strategy sometimes. It helps you start it off, or it or it helps you end it. Now, Pot of Avarice, as you all know, re return five monster cards from your graveyard back to the deck, and then draw two cards. Now, with this card in Gustos, you have you run into three different situations with this card. Either you want to return recruiters only and re replenish your the amount of attacks it takes your opponent to get through your your wall um, it's it's very good in this situation as especially if you're up against a deck like heroes or bubble beat where they just constantly attack over your monsters with blade armor ninjas and other things of the sort but uh, this causes them to rethink their moves and waste more resources on trying to get over your stuff. Very good for Gustos, as that is the whole goal of the deck, to waste their resources. Um, another situation is where you, want to, where you return some of your, your recruiters, and either you return a spent cam or you return some of your extra deck cards, like Synchros or Exceeds if you run them. Uh, in these, in that situation, especially if you're running two cam, this this is an ideal one. You, you return four, four recruiters and one cam. That way, that way you have either one cam or two cam back in, get, uh, back in the deck. Um, Always, always having a cam in deck is very ideal for a gusto player, as it gives you options for a gull. You either you still get to go into Winda, or you get to choose cam. It's a very ideal situation because it gives you your options, and you it lets you choose what you want to do. If you want a plus one, or if you want to keep a wall going. Now the other situation is basically just returning extra deck cards. If you've already returned all your Gustos from, from your graveyard back to the deck with cams or other cards that return as well, um, this is another ideal one because you're getting your, your extra deck cards back out of the graveyard and reusable. So, because if you've already returned all your, your recruiters, you're more than likely going to be... you more than likely have all your your resources back in your deck anyway, so you get you get a chance to go back into all those cards again. Maybe not as fast, maybe not as powerful, but you still get to get a choice on going back into them. So if a situation comes up where if you can go into a uh, Catastor and you just return them with Pot of Avarice, it's a very good situation, especially if you don't have Monster Reborn. Hands down, yeah card to, to run in this. If this ever comes off of one and goes to two, so help us. 
Um, as for creature swap, the reason why I'm featuring this in here as one of the two spell cards that you will see in every variant, it is because this deck is just ridiculous for Gustos. Uh, I would not recommend running this card less than two. Two in a deck for some variants is very good because it lets you tech in your, your other cards and it also lets you run your main deck cards of that variant. Um, some variants you should run three in because that is one of the best cards to, to try to use and I mean its plays are just ridiculous. Creature Swap for Gustos is essentially a plus one for you every time you use it. You run two or run three, it is a plus one every time you use it. Basically what it does, it, or what you would do, is you would swap one of your recruiters for a random monster. Um, for a Gusto player, it does not matter what you get. It is ideal to get a big monster, yes, but you, it does not matter to you. Because what you will end up doing is just attacking over it again and getting a monster from it. You plus one out of that combo, basically. It's very, very good all the time because not only do you get a random monster or just something that something that your opponent was counting on to start a combo on uh, for Lightsworn. If, the, if you manage to steal a Raikou, great, great card, because now, now you have a Raikou that's usable at any point in time that you want uh, after that turn, and milling for Gustos is really not all that bad. But, um, yeah, it's... It's just ridiculous sometimes. I mean, there's there's some plays, especially with Sprees. There's an OTK with Sprees. Basically what it is is uh, you have to have Sprees on the field, wind up, creature swap in hand, and a call the haunted face down. Call the haunted face down or something that brings back a monster, a monster from your graveyard that's just generic or, or something. Something to bring back a Gull or Galdo. It does not matter. So, what it is, is you would creature swap your window with random monster. For for this situation, we'll say your opponent has Light Pulsar Dragon and Lila. We'll say, uh, we'll say we have those. Um... Now, cre you creature swap your window. Now, your opponent is more than likely to give you Lila because they don't want to lose their big monster. They, they never see an OTK coming from this. So, at this point, what you would do is you attack with Sprees or you would attack with Lila, depending on its position. Um, but you would attack Winda with Sprees. You've just done a thousand damage right there. Now, at that point, you special summon Galdo as Winda would activate, and then you attack the Light Pulsar. You just dealt another two thousand. You bring out a Gull, and then you deal another twenty-three. Now, just from those three attacks, you've dealt. 5300 damage and you have the option to go into OTK if you if you would have it in this situation you would because you have that call the haunted so what so what you would do is you would bring out Winda crash with Winda deal another 15 and then call the haunted out Igal or Galdos and attack the light pulsar for game um, now if you didn't have the call of the haunted from a gull, you could still go into window if you wanted to, but you could you could also go into cam for that plus one because at that point you've you've already dealt fifty three hundred damage to to your opponent, especially with chaos dragons. That is very hurtful. 
Um, so, if you went into cam, you get a free plus one, you get to draw a card, you get to return recruiters back to your deck, which is the ultimate goal. Keep your loop going. And at that point, on your opponent's turn, they would be thinking, how do I get rid of th this combo? How do I get rid of this? How do I stop myself from losing? Um, as they don't, they don't want to attack with that light pulsar. They have, they have a lot of different options to do, but they don't want to attack your cam, um, or they want, they don't want to attack your low monsters, uh, for fear of losing because you only have to deal 2,700 damage, which isn't that hard if you to Chaos Dragons if you have Sprees out. Now, they, they will start thinking, well, how do I get rid of Sprees? Now, the general options for that is generally Compulse, Bottomless, well, not Bottomless, but uh, um, Compulse, Dark Hole, Smashing Ground, Soul Taker, among other things. But those are the, some of the main ones that you would see in a deck. Um, now, I like to run Lances in all my Gusto decks because if they try to bottomless Sprees on the summon, you just Lancer, and then at that point you, you attack. You have just lowered your, your Sprees' attack points by 800, and it does not matter to you, because what ends up happening is you have a 1200 attack point monster, but you deal an extra 800 to your opponent on whatever monster you, you attack. So, and plus it protects it for the turn, so I mean, you can't complain about that. But, yeah. Um... Now that I've kind of gone through the spells and some of the other combos for the deck, I'm going to go into the pure vari variant, or what is considered pure. I consider pure the pure variants very techy. They're very versatile just because of how you can tech cards and how you can run things. Because in, in a pure b build, you would essentially only run 11 Gustos you'd have three of each and then two cams. Now, um, basically, they, in a pure build, build, some players run a couple of extra ones, a couple extra gustos to either start or have different options to bring out as the, it gives them a wider variety of control. Now, the one that I am not too, I wouldn't say fond of, but I wouldn't recommend it all the time because all it really is is just a combo starter, is Kamui Hope of Gusto. She's a flip effect card with a thousand defense, uh, and all it does is special summon one Gusto tuner from your deck. She is another combo starter. If you do not have your recruiters, this starts it. It's not bad. Um, I can't say anything about it because really all it is is a combo starter. Or if you somehow manage to let it live for a turn, it's uh, synchro. Easy. But um, I find in a pure variant, there's a lot of different other different things that you can actually tech in to the deck because because there's so many different options. And Kamui is kind of a little bit lower on the list. <clears throat> now, the other one that I'm... The other one that they sometime in, sometimes include, I'm not in full agreement with it, but I have seen it done, and it has worked well for, for those players when it was used. And that card is Musto, Oracle of Gusto. His effect is once per turn, you can target one Gusto monster in your graveyard and one face-up monster on the field. 
Shuffle the first target into the deck, and if you do, negate the second target's effects until the, till the end phase. Now, the reason why I'm not entirely in, in agreement with this is because, yes, his, his, cost is, his effect has a cost, so, like, like, like Cam, but it only returns one. Now, I don't find returning one is very good because you're only returning one card. It doesn't make a huge difference, and it's only to negate an effect on the field. He's an 1800 beater, so he doesn't. He gets over a lot of different things, but at the same time, he only negates ne negates effects. Now, the reason why I'm kind of in agreement with this as well is because yes, he does negate effects, but he is great Valor bait, Valor bait, Photon streak, Bouncer bait, because especially Bouncer. Reason why is because if if Bouncer does not negate Musto's effect, and you have a plan on going off that turn if he doesn't if he doesn't have that or something else, um, Musto is a great card to bait out that Strike Bouncer negation because if they do not negate Musto. They lose their their negation for that turn, which is awesome. And I mean, I've seen players actually let it go through and then realize what it's actually doing. But I mean, Musto is great because I'll, for those players that you're playing against that actually know somewhat what Gustos do, Musto is probably one of your best little surprise cards that you can use because. Then your opponent is going like, "Well, what the heck does this do? Great, what a, what are you doing? Um, I don't know what to do." Um, and that is really Gusto's strength: is keeping your opponent off balance, keeping them guessing, wondering what you're going to do next. Now, now that I've kind of explained these two, I'll get into some of the other cards. Now, for the spells that you may also see in there, uh, that are kind of related to Gusto's, are Contact with Gusto and Quill Pen of Geldo's. These two cards are essentially the exact same thing, it's just that one does a different type of one for one, as, and the other one does a different type. Contact with Gusto, you, you target two Gusto monsters in your graveyard and one card your opponent controls. Shuffle both targets into the graveyard, back to the deck, and then destroy the, the opponent's monster. Not bad, but it it, it faces negation quite often. Uh, Quill Pen of Galdos. It does essentially the same thing, but instead of returning Gustos, it returns wind monsters back to, uh, back to the deck. And instead of destroying, it returns back to the hand. So this is a great out to Zen Mains, Gachi Gachi, um, Stardust, Synchros, Fusions, Exceeds. It's another. It's a spell version of Compulse, basically, that you get to return your Gustos as well. So it works out great for these guys. Now, with pure builds, they have other cards that they can that they can kind of tech in. It's really up to the playstyle of the player. But um, we have Raiko. The reason why this is this is a card that you can tech into pure Gustos is because in a Gusto build, uh, like pure, you don't care if you mill. If you mill, that's great, fine and dandy. You don't ever care. Um, plus, you get to remove a card from the well, destroy a monster on the f or a card on the field. But um, it works. And, I mean, it gets Gustos of the Graveyard, so you can keep Cam consistent, especially if you have him in your hand. Pot of Avarice as well. The only thing that you risk is really milling your spells and trap cards that you don't want to mill. That's your only risk. Another one that I personally love in all, well, not in all, but 
in any pure build I do um, is Junk Synchron. The reason why is because, well, Junk Synchron is great because if you start off with a gull or whatever, you have window on the field. Okay, you summon synchro, uh, Junk Synchron, you bring back a gull, and now you synchro for five, and if you really want to, you can go into Spreeze from that point if you go into Galdos. Now, at the same time, mid-game to late game, when you have when you have windows in the graveyard, it's great because you return you, you special summon your Winda and you get a free you get a one card Galdos. It works out great and it's very devastating to your opponent. Plus it's Veiler bait, so if you have other things you want to do and have your opponent not negate that, this is great Veiler bait because they, they will pay for not doing it. And if you combine the two, it makes for really nice chaos builds. It's really great. Another one that I that I really found really worked um, was Tour Guide. Now, before you say anything or comment anything, um, the reason why I say this is because I've actually tested this. Now, I, w I was testing when Tour Guide was at three, but the build still stays the same. Tour Guide, um, when you don't have anything to do between your, your recruiters or other things in hand, this card is great because what what you end up doing is you get a free monster, either if you're running Sang and you can do that, or even if in a Gusto build, I would even just run two Tour Guides. Just because you can go Guide into Guide and spam from there. But it gives you extra options for the deck, and if you have the extra deck space, you have other options, other ways of getting rid of things, other ways of doing things. It's really good, and it catches your opponent off guard. Like, why are you running this in, the, in that deck? Very good card. I would actually highly recommend this, uh, especially to try out. Now, if you're running Junk Synchrons, you, especially at three, you immediately are able to put in a Dark Simorg and have it consistent. Dark Simorg, uh, if you don't know what it does, is while it's face up on the field, it, it is also treated as a wind monster. You And you banish one dark monster and one wind monster from your graveyard to special summon it from your hand. Uh, you can banish one dark monster and one wind monster from your from your hand to special summoner from your graveyard. And while it's face up on the f uh, on the field, your opponent cannot set any cards on the field. So this means monsters, spells, or traps. They cannot set. It's great, especially mid-game after you cause your opponent to overextend and then pay for it. As this is your stun. It stuns them from stopping your your advances. Uh, the next turn, and it, among other things, it does that, but it also acts as a really nice beater. 2700 for next to no cost to bring out. Can't say it's not bad. Um, but all you really need is four darks in your deck to keep this consistent. You can run one or two. I mean, it's the, the choices are endless. Now, another one that I really liked was the interplanetary, interplanetary purply thorny dragon. Um, basically, what he does is, if you're if a monster you control is destroyed by battle or car, or by card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. He's a level five, twenty two hundred attack. Basically, he's great in gustos he he works as a card where you can where you get a card to synchro with or just as an extra beater i mean if you're if you're running low on beaters and all you have is your recruiter loop bam 2200 beater and or you could just go into synchros with them he's not that bad 
I highly suggest running, like, teching one, uh, trying it out, teching one, trying two. It's not a bad card, um, and for pure, it really works. Um, in pure builds, some people would consider this a different type of variant of Gustos, but I kind of consider it the same thing as it's not entirely a different variant it's just you're running you're running three card three copies of this and a little bit less monsters it's still considered pure kind of but shrine of the mist valley once per turn when a wind monster or monsters is destroyed by a card effect and sent to your graveyard except during the, bat the damage step you can special summon one level three or lower wind monster from your hand or deck but its effects are negated now, basically, um, this works for Gustos because um, it lets you special summon recruiters a lot um, in a lot more different situations. If you if you torrent them. Dark Hole, uh, I believe also if you saw them warning uh, their normal summon, it, it works too because it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be sent from the field. So it, it's not a bad card, and it keeps your recruiter your recruiter loop running. But the only problem I have with the Shrine of the Mist Valley build is the fact that if you if you run that. You basically have to cut down on the on the amount of monsters you run, so you wouldn't be running some of the other tech cards. And it if the if you're running that, it focuses more on just constantly wasting your opponent's resources. So I don't know. Give it a try. Like I said before, gustos are all about the player's per, um, play style. They have many different ways of playing, playing themselves, and it's all up to the player. But anyway, that's the last one I got, so uh, see you guys on part three.